It is so important to understand this. If you want to influence and help people, here's the key. Success is a doing. You've got to actually do it. Activity is high priority in the life process to try to get maximum benefit out of what we have available. Activity. I always tell people the most valuable lesson I got from my mentor, Jim Rohn, was I asked my father work two jobs. We were always broke. We had no money for food. And we lived in a community we moved to, which was, I thought they were all rich and we were on the other side of the tracks. It was lower middle class, but compared to where we lived before, these people seemed rich compared to us. And I, I just didn't understand it. And Jim said to me, Tony, it's not about the value of your soul. It's about the value of you in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And your father's skills are not that valuable. He used to take an underground parking attendant and he would take people's ticket and make change. So we don't start with inspiration, we start with education. Somebody says, well, just motivate this guy. He'll be all right. Just motivate him, get him turned on. Probably not. The guy's an idiot, you motivate him. Now you got a motivated idiot. So we start with education. What's the first education? If it isn't going well and you live in America, you have messed up. You don't need to change countries. You say, well, the country's messed up. That's like cursing the soil and cursing the seed and the sunshine and the rain, which is all you got. Don't curse all you got. When you get your own planet, you can rearrange this whole deal. But this one, you got to take like it comes. It's necessary to know that everybody won't see it that everybody won't join you, that everybody won't have the vision. It's necessary to know that, that a lot of people like to complain, but they don't want to do anything about their situation, that you are an uncommon breed. You know, you have to know within yourself that I can do this. Even if no one else sees it for me, I must see it for myself. That's necessary. It's also, ladies and gentlemen, necessary that you be creative when you're working on your ideas, that you understand the importance of, of changing up, of readjusting your strategies. Many times we can have a great idea, but if you're not advancing it in the right way and things don't happen, you become discouraged and think the idea doesn't work. No, that's not true. It's necessary that we become creative. It's necessary that you be flexible, that you are always thinking of how can I improve this better? This is a customer-driven economy. It's necessary for you to always explore various ways in which you can improve the quality of service that you're providing for the people in your organization. The research now shows it's being done at Yale, it's being done overseas in England as well, and they found that 40% of all jobs they project in the next 10 years are going to disappear because of technology. It's going to be replaced by an algorithm, it's going to be changed, you know, all these guys on Wall Street, you're seeing all these algorithms take over and they're getting rid of all these traders, right? It's changing radically these, in these hedge funds. There's three million truck drivers. Self-driving cars are here, in the next five years they will be the standard, certainly within seven or eight years. Are you gonna hire someone who can only work eight hours a day and sometimes gets drunk or can make a mistake when you can buy a machine, write down the machine, and be in a position where it works 24 hours a day driving? But no one is telling these drivers this, and it's, they have to retool now. So technology is the biggest challenge. Labor is less valuable because of efficiencies with technology, and it's gonna get better and better for technology, which is scary when you think about what's gonna happen for jobs. So I say to people, you gotta participate in your own rescue. You've got to retool yourself. Now here's an important question. What is your philosophy about activity? What about hard work? What about long hours? What about full days? If you're doing something, how hard should you go at it? How much time should you put in? Everybody has to develop their philosophy about activity. Just by way of review, let me quote you Old Testament says, six days activity, one day rest. That's called philosophy of ratio of activity. What is a good ratio of rest and activity? Old Testament says six days of one, one day of the other. Hire on the basis of competence, using objective tests, and let the cards fall where they're going to. And don't be afraid to tell people that that's what you're doing. Watch your HR department carefully and make sure that they're not pushing 
diversity, inclusivity, and equity initiatives, that they're not requiring people to take implicit association tests that hypothetically reveal their unconscious bias. All behavior is belief what? Some of you went 25, 50% further with no anything. Remember, Vision was talking about how it's not just, it's not working hard, but it's you, when, when you're in a certain state of mind, you could just go further and it's effortless. How many people are, have experienced this state of flow before? That state of flow where you lose track of time, where your attention is right there and you're in the moment. And it's the, your, the level of challenge is really matching your level of capabilities and you're stretching yourself and you're in that zone, right? Like yeah, that athletes talk about, that Stephen Cotler talks about in The Rise of Superman and Stealing Fire and so on. How many people are familiar with, with Steve's work, by the way? I'm just curious as context. Okay, so how do you get into those states? One of the ways is just believing that you can. Because if you believe you can or believe you can, either way you're right. Because all behavior is belief driven. Some of you went 25, 50% or more. What if you could go 25, 50% more in your business? That effortless. What if you could go 25, 50% even more in your body or in your relationship? Did you work harder the second time? When you turned the second time, yes or no? No, because it's a state, right? So behavior, so belief. Let me give you an example. I'm gonna play this game with you. We're gonna do this together collectively. I, I need some mic runners here, please. There's a couple mic runners. How many people here talking about memory? Because memory, forgetting is a state. When it comes to learning, let me give you a distinction here. A lot of people say, oh, I have a bad memory, right? They always think I have memory or I have focus or I don't have focus or I have creativity, I don't have creativity. I want you to scrap that. Creativity is not something you have, it's something you do. Focus is not something you have, focus is something you do. Energy is not something you have or don't have, it's something you do. Memory is not something you have, it's something you do. And what's the benefit of turning it into a do as opposed to something you have? What's the benefit? You have control over it because you can put it into a process. It becomes a strategy because there's a strategy for reading faster. There's a strategy for remembering names. There's a strategy for having focus. And it's a verb, not a noun. In a team takes ownership of its problems. The problems get solved. And that is true on the battlefield. It is true in business and it is true in life. So I say, take ownership, take extreme ownership. Don't make excuses, don't blame any other person or any other thing. Get control of your ego. Don't hide your delicate pride from the truth. Take ownership of everything in your world, the good and the bad. Take ownership of your mistakes, take ownership of your shortfalls, take ownership of your problems, and then take ownership of the solutions that will get those problems solved. Take ownership of your mission. Take ownership of your job, of your team, of your future, and take ownership of your life. And lead. Lead. Lead yourself and your team and the people in your life. Lead them all to victory. Look, you have a gargantuan competitive advantage because most people are caught up or card-carrying members, and I say this with respect, but it's reporting reality. Most people in the world right now in business are card-carrying members of the cult of mediocrity. In a previous episode, and I, I share this in my leadership presentations, I believe the world today is suffering, and that word, I'm choosing it 
consciously and carefully from the collective deprofessionalization of business. A little while ago, I was in an airport. There was an elevator repairman, and he had his boombox cranking out hard rock. Well, that's fine, but he's at work. He's not at home. I go into a store these days. There are people listening to music out loud when they should be taking care of customers. 